in general, those type of people like Kelly, Kelly used to be with, used to be with Wings of Redemption, Kimmy used to be with Kanye, Kalala used to be with Bobby Lee. Let's cut these people some slack, bro. Imagine being in a relationship with those people. Imagine being married to Wings of Redemption, to Kanye West, and to fucking Bobby Lee. Imagine being married to these people specifically, day to day, like, like you know, going to dinner, waking up with them. You know, I don't know, hanging out. Just imagine how infuriating and frustrating it must be, like dealing with like an a, a literal adult child. Um, so yeah, maybe she's broken. Maybe she arrived already broken because who else can be in a relationship with someone like that but somebody that's already got their own issues? But this whole idea that she's fucking, I don't know, man, some weird larger in life thing. I just, I just, I just don't get. I understand she probably isn't as innocent and as maybe you know naive as she maybe makes it out to be, but we got to relax with the devious big scale planning thing it's just no nah, it's not really that deep personally for me but hey what do i know what do i know so moving on <laughs> moving on talking about why people kind of go crazy we've got this documentary that i'm gonna watch a bit of and you know scan through a bit of it not watch the whole entire thing but we're gonna sit here and watch a little bit of it and this is courtesy of a channel called xlp and they've got this documentary they put together that's been racking up the views people have been absolutely loving this man all right look at that like it's already uh, nearly half a million views so people are clearly loving it it's got a lot of good um feedback and a lot of people have kind of you know spurned different topics off the back of it but essentially these two videos i think they essentially sum up a lot of the stuff I, I was seeing on that subreddit. I'm not sure if that subreddit is still around, but there was a subreddit someone put together in the wake of all the kind of Bobby Lee and um, Brenda Shaw and Kalala drama, where they were kind of putting together all these clips of her saying questionable things and stuff. So this might be just like the summation of that Reddit, because that was the first time I ever saw people like not liking her in general. I see some people complain about her on Tiger Belly podcast um, subreddit, sorry, but for the most part, they just talk about her being annoying and making it about herself and being a little bit self-centered, but actually going deep on her. I only saw on the subreddit so maybe this is like a a what you call it a um a uh a compilation of all that subreddit stuff but anyway let's watch a little bit of it now it's called kalila kuhn the most sadistic woman in comedy courtesy of xlp before you go on though yeah. real quick can i say this yeah the information i got that open relationship uh, that, that's not a it's not like anybody did a crime that that's not really breaking news i can't hold that over your head the other information you gave me was is is the the bad one which i don't want to get into okay okay that i don't want to bring up that's Wait. not fair to you guys or or anybody we can get into that Wait, what is that other thing? yeah we can get into that the other Wait, hold on let me let me oh, actually ahead. yeah probably let me let's assume that it's the same old narrative of me being a gold digger and stealing money from bobby I mean, is we, it within we, those lines? We talked about it, yeah. You and so, I had spoke about this, and you told me. Oh, truth. yes. I mean, let's yes. let's be real. That is an old, tired story. Bobby, call your accountants. Okay, here's the truth of the matter, okay? I don't really need to know. I don't need to know this. I, 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 don't I, I know. It's, it, I, I, here, okay. The, the, the only reason I'm here was to bring up the red thing. And I don't care, but I'm going to talk about it. Oh, God. Show you guys the information right, I have. Carry on and move. This is an archive poem published September 19th, 2014 on Kalila's now deleted website. The site was openly advertised on her Twitter and remained up long after she started her original podcast, which has also now been deleted, so I'm not going to be revealing any private information or even anything posted prior to her becoming a public figure. Not that this would matter to Kalila anyway, as we'll get into later in the video. She sees nothing wrong with opening other people's mail. She even admits to obsessively reading all of the letters sent from Bobby's previous girl, not to mention in the most perverse way possible. In spite of her willingness to read the private works of others, and even write about them publicly, she would go on to lock her site in 2016. When I went to the Wayback Machine archives for Clyla.com, I wasn't able to access the content from any of the articles. I tried multiple troubleshooting options, and almost gave up, until I just so happened to come across some workaround, which probably explains why nobody has posted about these anywhere even with their legions of dedicated detractors and the archives being readily available. Once I gained access, I quickly realized why she wouldn't want anyone reading these anymore. And I'm on a I know a lot of you guys say I waste my time and I'm a loser. And who, what someone said to me in the comment once said, um, I have an obsession with Brendan Schaub and stuff and all these kind of dumbass fucking opinions about these sort of things. I understand it from an outsider's point of view. It can look that way. But imagine 
sitting down and pulling together pieces of information and going digging deep and finding people's myspace accounts and facebook accounts of some random woman she's not even a comedian yes she might be a public figure and somewhat involved in stand-up comedy thing but she's just some chick imagine wasting time to do that imagine really wasting time to do that like imagine just imagine fucking hell honestly shocked that she put them out there to begin with these poems not only contain straightforward confessions to all of the worst allegations being levied against her at we're taking poems that people write online and, and using them as fucking confessions now yeah is that what we're doing oh fuck's sake the moment but more interestingly within these passages lie a rabbit hole of absolute insanity that's so dark i'm not even comfortable sharing all this information and I honestly wasn't even prepared to walk in on this. In spite of what the title might suggest, my goal here isn't to drum up unnecessary hate and have people go attack Kalila. Oh, really, dude? As fucking Crystalia would say, really? That's not your intention? What's this going to do then? It's going to make her get more fans, eh? It's going to make her be more loved. It's going to make her be more appreciated. Yeah, sure. Fucking hell. I wasn't even planning on making this video to begin with. I was in the middle of researching a much longer video on the entire LA comedy scene and just so happened to stumble upon this madness. Before this, I had never even seen an episode of Tiger Belly, so I'm not really partial towards either side. I'm just covering... So this you isn't even a fan of anything. He just stumbled across this and got super flipping tism levels deep into it and is now flipping pulling up poems and going on Facebooks and... Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> I don't want to say what I really think, but I think you guys know what I really think. Yo. Bring this drama as I see it. That being said, I do have limits. I'm not going to be covering everything. Some of these entries are just disturbing and sad. I'm only going over things directly pertaining to the current drama surrounding Tiger Belly and a few other hypersexual poems that are honestly completely harmless considering what she says on a daily basis. Because yeah. I was fucking my brother at a hospital. Was that, Is that the first time you yeah. fucked your brother? No, but it was maybe like a, <laughs> maybe like the third time. But I mean, he was a very like sweet, meek boy. He he's he's passed. You know, he killed himself, but not too long after. <laughs> That's a fucking hilarious clip, though. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. I think he's I think he's winning me over now. I think he's winning me over. Kalila, I'm sorry. I think he's winning me over. What the fuck? She fucked her brother and then he and then he what? And then he killed himself. Excuse me? Did that happen because he you fucked him or did that happen because he was sad and like Okay, cool, 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 cool. I used to jerk off dogs a lot. But this isn't like a known thing. And also, what is this? Anyway, this is just podcast talk. These guys say crazy shit on podcasts to entertain their fans, to get more listeners and stuff, and to go viral. This is what they will do. Why are we flipping holding them to account? This is like when people were going crazy when um, Joey Diaz shared that fucking story about him um, <laughs> allegedly jumping, jumping, jumping in some girl's window and eating her out when she was asleep or something. <laughs> <laughs> obviously it's super gross and bad but it's a joke man it probably never happened anyway but yeah people were like going on like he was flipping showing you a video or it was a doc it wasn't a documentary it wasn't man let's relax you remember that joe diaz man jumping through some woman's window and like i don't know i think she had one leg or something as well joe diaz is fucking a legend but yeah if other people want to go find him and attack her for things that aren't in the open already that's on them I'm not going to be bringing in any new lines of attack. I'm only going to be using public posts to add further context to a developing story. With all of that out of the way, let's get back to the original poem. I ran you ragged to the gravel, fed you time for gold, held you closely so falsely, watched your ache unfold. You steered the reins as you were aptly told, not knowing you were headed for a stab, capture, and hold. I'm sorry, so sorry, for your heart I cajoled, and for thieving back all the things I sold. I'm an artist, a con, self-punished but paroled, a savvy salvator, spoiling good to mold. 
For this, I ask pardon, your good faith I have trolled. I know nothing of love but a dead winter's cold. This nigga's out here reading this poem like he's fucking auditioning for fucking some Hollywood movie or something. Like, what the fuck is this, man? If you guys think I'm wasting my time talking about these comedians and laughing at these clips, what's this? This motherfucker actually spent his time. It's bad enough when you find your own poetry. Reading somebody else's poetry from like however long ago that they writ maybe when it was in a bad place or just, you know, people just trying to, you know, self medicate or whatever, help them heal themselves, whatever it may be. Just cringy stuff. It's like finding your old raps and stuff. Like, legit, this is what you're reading in this dramatic tone. Like, God damn it. Wow, what poetry. The standout lines here are obviously fed you time for gold, held you closely so falsely, and I'm an artist, a con, all of which amount to what I can only interpret as a blatant admission of gold digging. If you're unfamiliar... What? 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 After this moment... You throw money at my tears, which is okay. you uh, You know what? Okay, I, you, when you say that, it hurts my feelings. Why? Because, because what if we were poor? It would be a, more difficult. If we were poor, Papa, you we would be divorced because there's no way you know how to show me love. What? <laughs> because you throw money at my tears, and if we were poor, what would you throw at my tears? Love. Okay, anyways. Let's, let's <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I love you. I love you, okay, Papa. I love you. Isn't, it, isn't this just a bit? Isn't this a bit? Are we reading into everything? Like, oh my God, man. The level of tism is just on another level. Honestly, the level of tism is on another level. I'm literally like scratching my head. I want to dig my fucking fingers into my brain. This is so fucking redacted. Like legitimately redacted. Aren't they joking? This is clearly a bit in the podcast. She's even got a little smile on her face. Like, everyone's playing into it. Like, what is this? Uh, Okay. On March 15th, 2016, Kalila would receive widespread scrutiny from Bobby's fans, with the clip even making it to the top of r slash cringe, and labels such as Gold Digger sticking so thoroughly that random top 10 facts about ex-celebrity sites have it listed as one of the most notable things about her. After the Reddit post would gain traction... Kalila would address it by offering $2,000 to whoever doxes the innocent Redditor. As a matter of fact, I'll give you, any Tiger Belly listener, $2,000 of my own money if you find the IP address of this person. (laughs) (laughs) She got money. Not his money, my money. money. Her money. After initially laughing at the idea, Bobby would say that this sounded insane. Asking what she would do if she found the information. Baby, just from your baby, face, now, just your face, baby, I know who you're talking it's about. It's getting fucking crazy. <laughs> it's getting ridiculous. <laughs> it's interesting. It's ridi- and it is, no, it's not interesting. What are you going to do, wrath? Once Kalila sees this negative response, she says she would just invite them on the podcast. No, not well, wrath. What happens if you find the name? I want that person to be on our podcast. Oh, oh so you want... Ah, uh, okay. Bobby responds with, oh, so you want blank? hinting at some enemy in the podcasting world that they would want on. Bobby says there's only a list of about five people who would want to do something like this. Okay. But it's it's a one of five names. That's good that you narrowed it down. Okay, and... Uh, no, I don't think that it's that. I think it was probably just a fucking Cheeto-fingered little dick fucking dude. Well, there we go. There's the rat. There's like, the anger. The there's the anger. But, I mean, I think, okay... <laughs> there's a resentment. When there. in the history of anything other than, like, Vice... Have have is has there ever been an, a true interview of a Cheeto fingered troll? Right. Her lashing out this aggressively at someone just harm. Yo, you sound like a Karen. Now, if that was aggressive to you, you need to fucking hand your nuts back to your fucking parents. That's what you need to do. You need to chop them off, put them in a little envelope, and mail them back to fucking Manhood Town or Manhood HQ or something. That was aggressive. Legit. You think that was aggressive? Harmlessly laughing at an awkward moment shows a profound guilt, to which I refer you to a poem published on February 14th, 2014, under the name A Formal Apology. Their faces varied, some in subtlety, 
some with distinct divide. Yeah, le, um, le Potter main. No, no bed for me, bro. Yeah, this is my Friday night. This is sober October, so I'm spending my Friday night fucking watching this nonsense. So uh, have some sympathy for me, please. Do not attack me. Do not insult me, please. I'm already on edge emotionally and physically. But they were all the same. I loved them all. So cruelly. So unjustly. What I wish for now is their reprisal. To shame me in the daylight and exact a public drowning. Yo, Genghis Khan, I know. I know I'm in no position to judge that guy because I watch Short Show. I know this. But I'm just saying for the people that fucking judge me. The ones that judge me and say that I'm obsessed. Imagine me making a documentary like this, analyzing shit and reading over texts and stuff and zooming into faces and, you know, putting text off and interpreting things and make, like, really imagine, imagine. So that they may in turn scrape away the festering layers of guilt that have rendered me sleepless all these years. The thing was, they were all so beautiful, and I could not resist the dogged desire to break them. Forgive me, I don't know how to hold fragile things. They were delicate, I was deliberate. These last two poems paint a portrait of someone who latches on to weak and insecure men steals from them oh this guy's fucking honestly man go outside bro go outside go out fucking side honestly what what how's he fucking pulling all this from fucking poems please someone tell me how is he pulling this from poems or is he just like um <sighs> <laughs> I don't fucking get this. If this is like I don't I don't I don't know. I don't know. I just them and take sadistic pleasure in emotionally abusing them. I could not resist the dogged desire to break them. They were delicate. I was deliberate. Uh... Once again confirming the second most common criticism of Kalila that she emotionally manipulated Bobby as well as her previous boyfriend into a one-sided open relationship. But what I'm saying is, this... So what, though, man? Bobby's a literal, like, adult baby. Maybe he needed to be pushed into something. I don't know. Who cares? Like, really? Who fucking gives a shit? <laughs> I don't understand this, like... They're going on as if, like, um... You know what they act like? You know what they act like with this sort of stuff? You know what they act like? You know what they act like? I'm just thinking. They go on as if, like, Bobby Lee is special. I mean, yeah, Bobby Lee, yeah. They go on as if Bobby Lee is fucking special needs or something he's not he's just kind of immature and maybe on the spectrum but they act like he's special needs like he's legitimately redacted and needs like somebody a minder to like help him and stuff and you know he can't have, open his own bank account and all that sort of no he's just you know he's, he's a hollywood older dude that's kind of been you know um caught in a perpetual state of like you know um, infancy for ages right he's kind of never grown up he's like peter pan thing like kind of had brian calendars and he acts like he's 20 years old, but he's like 60. Where he's talking about dicks and fucking and all that sort of shit, right? And being a lad. But you're a grown man with like four kids and shit. Do you know what I mean? It's like, relax. This guy's not like, there's nothing wrong with him. Really, there's nothing wrong with Bobby Lee. He's perfectly fine. He might be a bit immature. He might have his personality quirks and his faults, the addiction stuff, whatever. Everyone's got their demons. Everyone's got their issues. I'm not judging him. But people act as if like legitimately he's, he's got something wrong with him. And Kalila came in and took advantage of her. Like it's like, it's not like that. You know what I mean, he's not that. Have you seen that picture of that girl that everyone was sharing online? That viral picture of that, that of that girl with Down syndrome and she had like a crazy bum, and she's wearing this like workout gear, and everyone was like making crazy comments on Twitter. That's not who, that, who fucking Bobby Lee is. He's not that guy. He's not that woman anyway. He's just a quirky, weird type of dude. And maybe she came in and helped him in some regard. And who knows if she did, she did funnel some cash to the side for herself. I don't know. Would he have made that without her anyway? I don't know. Would they have made that together regardless? I don't know. I don't really give a fuck. Like really don't. I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't care. Like I really don't. This is one of the most like redacted things I've seen in my entire life road of love this story that we create doesn't have to be defined by such strict rules of monogamy whoa dude what are you saying right now what i'm saying is <laughs> whoa, i would dude. never i would never <laughs> 
I would never betray your trust. I would never do anything <laughs> without you seeing it in broad daylight. What I'm saying is down this road, should you ever come up to me and say, hey, you know what, sweetie, this is what I had in mind and this is what, you know, whatever we need to nope. do to sp nope. Nope. spruce up our sex <laughs> life. Nope, nope. I will not lie. Why are you so... Because this is exactly the road you went down with G Unit and, and Steve. No, I never... That was the first... I, you're going to hold me to one relationship. No, I'm saying... No, I'm not holding you to it, but I'm saying that these are the seeds that are being planted for that kind of situation. And what I'm saying is, is that I'm not going to do that. What I'm saying is, yes, I do. Maybe I'm projecting my own, my own fantasies. This is one of many examples of Kalila grooming Bobby into what would eventually become an open relationship. This just sounds like two adults who clearly haven't had an honest and clear conversation about what they want in a relationship. This is what it sounds like. And for some reason, they're airing it out on the podcast, which is a bit strange, a bit weird, but it's very LA and very bizarre. But essentially, it's what it sounds like. It sounds like they probably had issues regardless. Um, she probably took advantage of the thing. Okay, let me mention it on the show because he's right in front of me now. And they're trying to work it out in real time. But this just sounds like two people who aren't on the same page. I don't see anything malicious in it. I don't know. Like... Chip. Bobby makes his complete and total opposition to the idea of polyamory. 100% clear in that last video. There is a really attractive guy on Instagram hitting me up. Mm -hmm. Can he join us? Well, I'll tell you my answer right now. <laughs> yeah, let's hear it. No. No, I cannot do that. Regardless, Kalila would wait until Bobby, someone with a severe history of drug addiction, had relapsed in order to open up the relationship. The open relationship... You and I, we we were. That's not for the was for the. We even for talked about it. it's not for the public consumption, right? Because it was delicate. It was a delicate thing. He was right? also we were going back on drugs. There's so many different. There's things. so many different elements, elements to it. Elements to it, right? There, it was a dark. You know what? What's it? What's been so free do? I'm gonna say if Uche is not saying, it, I'm gonna say it. I think if you're Bobby Lee, you have to accept relationships that you get into. Number one. Most likely, the person that's going to be into you probably isn't into you because of your looks. They're not into you because of your amazing, going to be an amazing life partner. They're not into you because they're going to build a big family with you or whatever it may be because you're not on that kind of time. You're like an adult baby. So clearly, the person that's getting with you is sort of getting with you under the premise that they're going to have to put up with a lot of shit. And you're going to have to, you know, it's just like, it's kind of a silent agreement that you're doing. They're giving you the ability to kind of walk down the street and have this trophy wife you obviously and they also have the opportunity to like you know sponge off you because you've got clout and shit but you have to accept if you're probably leader quite honestly you're going to get some people coming in your life that are going to come in there with some ulterior motives and some some you know whatever else they want to get out of it and i think it's maybe best for you to maybe admit at the beginning and say hey let's sit down here's what i can offer you here's what you can offer me and just kind of be honest about it but you guys are going on as if like this guy's a catch like, are you guys for real? Like, I like Bobby Lee. I like Tiger Belly. I like all the, you know, I like everything they do. I like, um, what's that show he does with fucking Andrew Santino? I think the guy's funny. He's hilarious. But for the women in the chat, like, for real, can you imagine being in a relationship with that guy? Forget doing anything sexual. Forget how what it would look like and stuff. Just imagine being in a relationship with him. Like, day to day. Like, that's your boyfriend. That's your husband. Like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like hell like so yeah if you are going to relationship with him maybe run me a car maybe like allow me to go to fucking hawaii and smash some fucking surfers here and there whatever it may be like as long as long as i come back home it's all good like i don't get i don't get why this is such a bad thing i really don't <laughs> you're going as if he's like the catch of the year fucking hell if this guy, he said it plenty times himself bobby lee if he wasn't funny he'd be fucking struggling out here like maybe it's the same for most dudes right because most dudes aren't super attractive and we have to kind of use our personalities to kind of you know um get sexual favors or have girls be into us but still like you know bobby lee's not the greatest catch in the world let's be fair bro i know kalala has her issues but bobby lee isn't the best either time it was very fragile interestingly enough kalala has admitted prior that she waits until the men are in a vulnerable state to introduce the third party Go ahead. Yeah, this is. I was with one for about two and a half years. I met the other person. He became a friend of the both of us. One day it turned into a, hey, you know, 
let's see if you know we could just have i asked i asked him i was like would you be down if he like joined was he in the room he was he had spent the night he was in the shower and we were having sunday morning sex and i remember just saying like i was a little manipulative in the sense that he was a already little. inside me when i asked <laughs> a little mm. you know i didn't ask beforehand he was I, the crier as damning as all of this evidence is i am she sounds like a bit of a whore you're free to do what you want it's your life live it she's a, she sounds like she's a bit sexually adventurous likes to get up to some freaky shit her search history on Pornhub might be a bit nuts. Is that a crime? Is that a crime? Exactly. She's for the streets. Exactly. Is that a crime that she's for the streets? Please. We're making documentaries about girls that are for the streets. Is that what we're doing now? Girls that want to be sexually promiscuous and get out of funny stuff. That's what, that's what we're doing now. We're making, we're making documentaries about girls that like to have threesomes. That's what we're doing. <laughs> it's like, you, I don't know positive that Kalila's defenders will continue to say that their relationship was opened up mutually, citing Kalila's claim that Bobby had cheated, when the very woman who Kalila claims that Bobby cheated with vehemently denies it. None of us are truly positive about the nature of their relationship. We only know as much as they tell us, so all of this is speculation. Oh really, dude? Weren't you fucking pulling up fucking, um... You know, character studies and personality traits shit from fucking poems that you found on fucking MySpace. Now you're saying you don't know much. What is it, mate? Make your mind up. Either you do know everything or you don't know everything. What's the fuck is this guy talking about? That being said, we can look to people who know Bobby in real life and see what they think of this relationship. On March 26th of this year, a private message from Bobby's brother was leaked, claiming verbatim that Kalila had brainwashed his brother systematically keeping him away from his family, and I quote, milking my brother's gold, adding that she was cheating on him with another man in Hawaii, which was putting him through serious emotional turmoil. So much so that it landed him in the psych ward, which Bobby believed would just be a rehab center, but Kalila would instead send him to the asylum. You know what's funny? Um, what's his face? Um, Bobby's brother, what's his fucking name? He's somebody that doesn't get it much stick that he probably should that. He played a big role in that whole fucking debacle because he's the one that set it off because I think those texts found their way to BGL or maybe it was BGL he was texting, I don't know who, or maybe he was talking to them behind the scenes, but he's the one that started all the rumors about the gold digging thing and the threesomes and the Hawaii guy. Like He's the one that leaked all of it, so he played a really big role in it, essentially. But I don't think, was it ever public address? I don't know if you guys know. Do you guys know if it was public address? Did Bobby Lee public address the fact that his brother was the one that basically baited up everything? Because he's the one, he made the, he made the extra bait. Like, he's the one that, no, sorry, he's the one that um started, I think, the hate train against Kalila. Like, because no one, I get, no one, I think, knew this stuff beforehand. Um, Yeah, Stevie uh, failed the vibe check. Yeah, Steve, like, weird guy. And again, an an another one too, on the spectrum, but clearly, again, is he a catch? Are you gonna be? Are they gonna be flipping, making documentaries about whatever girl or guy he ends up with, and saying, "Oh, they go digging him. They're taking a bunch of him." Yes, they should. They probably should take a bunch of him. Do you know what I mean? Because it's mutually beneficial. He gets a flipping partner that can love and care for him, and they get some money on the side of it. What's wrong with that? Really, I really don't understand. You guys are going on as if these stand-up comedians are fucking good catches. Like, imagine being married to Burt Kreischer, like, and these kind of people. Like, maybe it's good that they get the ability to go on private jets and stuff and have breaks here and there because these guys day-to-day -day living with them must be absolute hellhole. In response to this, on the episode of Tiger Belly in which they announced their breakup, Bobby claimed that he had no money when he met Kalila, that his only source of income was the road, and that the podcast would revitalize his acting career. You know, when I met Kalila, I had no money. You know, I was making... I can tell you what I was making on the road. I had no other prospects of cash. The only amount of money I was making is through doing a B room sometimes and getting not a door deal, but getting like, you know, um, a guarantee, you know. When if you go to his IMDb, Bobby maintained a consistent average of 5.6 rolls per year in the five years following Mad TV's conclusion in 2009. And Bobby would continue to maintain an average of 5.6 roles per year in the five years following Tiger Belly's creation. And the quality of these roles haven't necessarily gone up either. The only stat...
that has actually seen an increase is a mere five more episodes of television appearances a year. So this claim is dubious at best. This is fucking tism levels. Tism levels on another level. I don't hear anyone saying that I'm the same. No, I'm not the same. I, I watch some clips on the fucking Reddit. I get some clips on YouTube and that's it. This is fucking tism to the core. Man did right click view page source. He made a script to fucking scrape shit from IMDB and to check like, are you? Nah, 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 nah. Best. But Bobby would go even further and claim that everything positive that he had ever experienced in his entire career was a direct result of Kalila. Pretty much confirming his brother's brainwashing accusations. Ironically enough. Or maybe that he was in love with somebody and he saw the contribution that they gave to his life and stuff and he was being nice and said something grandiose to make them feel nice about themselves. It could be that or his brainwashing, yeah? Yeah, it could be that. It could just be him just being nice. Oh yeah, my girlfriend helped me out. She played a big role. Without her, I wouldn't be anything. Brainwashed? No, maybe it's just him acknowledging that he's made this something nice. Huh? The, all the things that I have in my life. So what? So what? Um, James Sparrow, are you... He says, oh, if it makes you feel better, AZ. James Sparrow, are you somebody that agrees with XLP? Are you, are you one of the people behind this documentary? Did you help put this material together? Or are you some... Ah, oh, these fucking chat things, the adult chat stuff. Oh annoying please let me know james sparrow please let me know are you part of this why do you think kalila is such a bad person I'd, I'd actually like to hear from you maybe you have more um maybe you have more fucking um information than i do about this stuff because i just see a girl that's a bit freaky um a dude that clearly is vulnerable and needed a, a mummy girlfriend type of thing she came in and filled that void all right, she fucking maybe slid across some fucking gold coins for herself. Don't give a shit. She had to fucking wipe his bum and, and help him out whenever he was going through what he was going through. So that's probably good compensation. Whatever. You know what I mean? He could have ended up with worse people. I don't think so. Jeremy, you know I mean? it's not that bad. It's not that big of a deal. The Brendan thing was probably embarrassing. I get it altogether, but lesson learned. You keep it moving. Is it really that deep? I don't know right is a direct result of meeting her and her her and i building a business together um other things have grown out of that like you know my it rekindled my acting career um you know i've i've done well when it comes to selling things and whatnot it's been very good but um you know without her i don't know where i'd be bobby giving kalila all of the credit for his accomplishments as if he would have never started a podcast without her, is insane. Being a comedian, the only profession in the world where having a podcast is an industry standard, it is a guarantee that Bobby would have started a podcast during the boom with or without Kalila. No, it isn't. It's not guaranteed. guarantee. Why is it guaranteed this? This guy still hasn't recorded a fucking comedy special. Why did you think he wouldn't have... This is not a guarantee. He obviously needs someone to hold his hands. Bad Friends feels like something that Andrew Santino puts a lot of work into and the people he works with there and putting it together. It feels like obviously they work together as a duo, but let's be honest, like, why? I don't know. Like, this is not guaranteed. She played a... I don't think she was that important. She wasn't a fucking creative director or anything, but I, I'm sure she played some role in terms of getting him out of bed and putting, letting him do the show together. I don't know. Like, and clearly he's still the magic. It's not like she's the talent behind the show. She's just a good companion and helped to put it, you know, steer the ship maybe a little bit, but he's still the talent. He's still what makes the show funny. Without Bobby Lee, that Tiger Valley podcast doesn't work at all. So it's not like she's super, super important, but she did play a role. But I just, I just don't agree with this thing. Oh, he's going to, he was always going to record one. No, he wasn't. He hasn't done a comedy special still. And he's super funny. Like, why is he recording? Why doesn't he have one? We don't have one um, special of his that we can see. Oh, this is all the jokes he was making 10 years ago, 20 years ago. If he does one, it would just be all this. It would be a combination of all the work he's done. And, and if I remember correctly, I used to listen to Tiger Belly. The common accusation about Tiger Belly was, um, uh, the common accusation against Bobby Lee was that he didn't write a lot of new material, that he, he performed the same type of stuff. So if you saw him last year, most likely the stuff he's performing now is still the same. So, come on. You have to wonder how much of this is damage control on Bobby's part. 
protecting someone you still deeply cares for from backlash that can be extremely overwhelming and painful? And how much of this is a product of Kalila's so-called brainwashing? In her poem titled Coffee Break, initially published all the way back in June of 2008, and reposted once again in March of 2014, Kalila would further detail her manipulative ways. Sometimes when I drink coffee, I think I can rule the world. When I think I can rule the world, I think I can rule yours. Sometimes when I drink coffee, I picture you helpless, like a puff. Sometimes when I drink coffee, I want to run into a fucking motorway and get hit by a fucking lorry. But on a puppeteer, domineered by my hands. Sometimes when I drink coffee, I'm bold and rising, sitting atop my hill of prodigious hope, waiting to slap the fuck out of you. These sociopathic tendencies are so blatantly obvious that from the time of her very first public appearance, they would already be widely acknowledged. In early 2014, Kalila would appear on episode 102 of the DVD ASA podcast, now known as the Pornhub podcast, where she would detail her open relationship prior to Bobby. Following this, many negative posts would appear on the DVD ASA subreddit, all with high engagement numbers and extremely positive upvote ratios. With all this in mind, the recent breakup shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. It was even being predicted long before it was made public. And this isn't even the first time Bobby and Kalila have broken up either. On October 10th, 2014, Bobby would go on the Sam Roberts Friday show and explain that him and Kalila had parted ways. You're a son of a bitch. Because you said a minute ago it's not been a good day for you. Yeah. What's going on, Bobby? She left. She my girlfriend. We've been fighting a lot, and it's like, it's um, it's over now. Why is it over? Well, first of all, what were you fighting about? Mainly destiny. What does that mean? It, it's a video game. Oh, I thought you meant you were fighting. <laughs> I thought you meant you were fighting over, like, where you're going oh, together. Oh, like, what's your oh, destiny no. together? We don't have destinies because we don't live in, like, you know, the Lord of the Rings world. <laughs> right, well, yeah, that's yeah. silly. Well, I'm not going on adventures and defending dragons and stuff. No, you're fighting over the video game yeah. destiny. You're not fighting dragons. Yeah. You're playing a video yeah. game. Kalila would post about this situation eight days later in her final entry on the website, titled Bob, Two Mics, and a Touch of Love. I'm not going to read this entire thing. But after starting off the poem by reminding us how insignificant our problems are in the wake of the Ebola outbreak, she would go on to compare their relationship to that of Mike Tyson and Michael Spinks. Yes, really, saying that she's felt like both of them over the course of their time together. She then goes on to complain about their sex life, saying, Your anatomical shape and structure is not ergonomic. Basically, your overall design is conducive for prison style sex only. Never, convi <laughs> never conventional doggy style. It's really sad if you think about it. Still, we revel in the oddities of one another. I like to spit in your mouth for funsies. I delight in the reverberations of your farts that sound like someone is making popcorn for 12 theaters worth of people. We are both demented, both prone to self injury. Some would argue that we are both catastrophic human beings. They're probably right. I think they're definitely right. She would continue to make banal comparisons between love and combat, until eventually begging Bobby to take her back. Thank you so very much for your strange love. I'd like to keep it, if you'll let me. This latest breakup doesn't appear to be any different. Bobby has talked about wanting to move into a new, more positive stage in his life leaving all of this behind him as he approaches old age. Yet he continues to live with Kalila, housing her family, and even sleeping in the same bed as her. Wait a minute, are you guys still in that same place? On yeah, the in the same hill place, and yeah. she's also, we sleep on the same bed. What? When Andrew Schultz brought this up to him, saying that he was almost free, and that he needed to move into separate homes immediately, Bobby acted as if this was the plan. Yeah, I mean, he's almost free. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But you guys still live in the same place. Why can't you guys be best friends? Imagine you guys would be best friends and you have your own places. <laughs> and she can do her thing. That's and true. And you can do your thing. She is going to, right? Yet when they inquired with Kalila's niece, who said she had spoken to her about it, she didn't seem too convinced. Is that the plan? I think so. You don't know. <laughs> no, 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 you don't think so. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. You're part of the plan. Are you part of the plan? Do you, I, has she talked to you about it? Maybe. 
Oh, oh my God. God. Hey, hey, hey. She only knows you can't smell a rat. Schultz knows that Bobby needs to separate from Kalila completely. If you watch his reaction to Kalila's appearance on Flagrant, the disgust is palpable. Hopefully Bobby will start to listen to the guidance from his friends and fully move on. This breakup gives them the perfect opportunity to truly speak their mind without making him defensive, so there's at least a chance he'll make it out of this. Oh, and by the way, who do we have to thank for this golden opportunity? That's right, it's the GOAT. So when like the whole Brendan Schaub thing happened, he almost like forced it out of us, even yeah. though we weren't ready to talk about and it And we want to thank him for that. Thank you. So <laughs> I guess like in, in a sense, like, you know, it, that was a blessing in disguise because it really like forced us to like tackle head yeah. on because I think we would have taken much longer to deliberate. So there you have it. Our boy, the gringo poppy himself, has single handedly freed Bobby Lee from the clutches of the succubus. After revisiting their beef, I don't even think it's too far-fetched to say that Kalila has been running some sort of hate campaign against Brendan. Well, yeah, I can, I can show it to you. Here's... Okay, I'm done. 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 She's not part of the hate camp. I'm done. I'm done. I can't. I can't do this anymore. I'm done. If you want to watch just the rest of it, you can. It's called that by XLP. I'm not watching that shit again. The kids fucking are worded um the tism levels are fucking off the chain if people think i waste my time talking about short build this nonsense i don't know what this stuff is i'm not doing that again ever again i'm not doing that ever again ever and again i didn't watch it beforehand this that was my first reaction to it i'm never doing that again what a waste of time what an incredible waste of time 